noches vacías. Resist the urge to call this a cliche. <laughs> I hate seven. I'm standing in front of the mirror, uh, deconstructing, deconstructing my favorite, my Barbie, favorite doll. Barbie doll. And I and color her color brown, brown with, with a magic, magic marker. marker. And, and I cut her pretty blonde, blonde hair, hair till it's as short as mine. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> of course she's, she's ugly, ugly now. now. <laughs> so I strip her of all her clothes. So I no strip coochie. her of all her clothes. I decapitate her. She has no coochie. And I wish for a brand I new pair of jeans and pull her plastic legs so far apart and spread that one of them springs out of my hand and hits the so mirror. So far apart that one of them springs out of my hand and hits the and mirror. And there's a small crack in my reflection. And there's a small crack in my reflection. So, uh, what's the phrase? In the beginning? Uh, in the beginning, there was a mirror. A uh, family heirloom passed down from generation to generation. Woman to woman, mother to daughter. December 25th, 1865. Seven days after the 13th Amendment is passed, my great-great-grandmother's housemistress uh, says Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. She's just been officially emancipated. <laughs> and she gives my grandmother a mirror as a farewell gift. It's thin and long with chubby white angels all around the hand-carved ivory frame. For great-great-grand, this mirror represents freedom and self-ownership. Raceless, sexless. Nameless me, me. Uh, it's a symbol of my career as a slave, self-loathing. But I didn't know that at first. Of course, you never do. <clears throat> I was an infant, and I saw my reflection, and there was no beauty or ugliness. Uh, there was just me, uh, raceless. Sexless, nameless me. Raceless, sexless, nameless me. <laughs> Just me, standing across from me, looking at myself. That's a powerful moment. Bing. Bing. Awareness, self-recognition. Self I am separate from, but connected to the people I, I see. I am visible I am and real, from, but connected to the other people I, can almost I see. I remember it. I'm visible but, you know, you and get older real. and it gets more complicated. I can almost remember it. Age five, uh, my father has just slapped my hand away from the stove and I'm standing in front of the mirror, you know, crying, staring, fascinated. You know, who knew my face could make such diverse contortions? You know, my, my lips are trembling and my, my eyes are red and my face is shiny with tears. Oh, uh, I'm like clay, I think, and then I wonder what the the angels, the, the white angels framing my face, I wonder what they're made of. You know, not clay. Their faces are smiling, unchanging. You no, know, not like mine. Who's different? I wonder, me or them? Age six. I'm different. Barbie and the angels have thin, perky noses, uh, straighter hair, nicer clothes. Well, the angels aren't wearing much, but I bet if they wanted to, they could afford nicer clothes. All my clothes are hand-me-downs uh, from my cousin Tootie. Don't laugh. And my mama says that new clothes aren't as important as my college fund. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I don't care. 
Now I want a new pair of blue jeans like my best friend Kate wears to school. Ah, she has blue eyes like Barbie. H10. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I hate the way I look. Black girls call me dark and nappy. Fuck them. Not because I'm really dark, but because my father won't let me straighten my hair. He says only grown women can perm their hair, and since I don't like to take showers every day, I ain't no woman yet. Age 12. I just got my period. I don't look any different. I'm still lanky and titless. But my mother's on the phone with every relative, saying, my baby's a woman now. Well, my father sees me staring at myself. And he puts his cheek against mine, and he makes eye contact with my reflection. He says, you're getting big now. Uh, time for us to talk. And I'm thinking he's going to lecture me about not grinding with boys at school dances or getting pregnant. You know, things I'm already afraid of. But he says, you're getting big now. You a black woman, girl. And it's time for us to talk. People going to give you shit because of the color of your skin? And what's in between your legs? Fuck them. But fuck them. You hear me? Fuck them. You hear me? Fuck them. You smart, you pretty, and you got family. Remember that. And he kissed me on the cheek. And died of sickle cell anemia the next year. Oh, age 14. <laughs> I am modeling my newest outfit. A uh, short denim skirt from uh, Rigo Boss, a tight white t-shirt. My tits are in, and I've learned how to walk so that my ass can switch from side to side. My hair is permed straight. I'm wearing makeup, and I just got my ears pierced. And our black men, they whistle on the street now when I walk by on my way to school. And they say, hey, mama. Hey, mama. Looking real sweet. And I like it. And white men, they look at me too sometimes, but they don't make eye contact, as if being attracted to me is wrong. You know, I look all right, I guess. I wish my hair were longer. I wish I looked like Vanessa Williams. I want to be a fly girl like on TV. You know, all the boys think they're fine and they're good dancers.